The Polled Dorset is Australia's number one prime lamb sire. For nearly 60 years, this Australian developed breed has led the way in prime lamb genetics. Backed by over 4,500 flocks, this progressive breed has remained Australia's favourite. If you're going to go into feeding or fattening lambs, um, the first preference is the Dorset cross for sure. Yeah, we've tried a few other pathways over the years, uh, but we've always come back to the Dorset first cross. We uh, started on the pale Dorset at, at least 40 years ago and uh, they've done the job for us. And I see no reason to change. We run normally around about four, four and a half thousand head of sheep. Uh, mainly merino ewes, but we do cross them with, uh, with pole dorset rams. Um, so, so there's a, a nice association there too. The dynamics within the breed and competition amongst stud masters has resulted in the rapid evolution of their sheep in meeting the requirements of today's changing lamb market. You, you are fortunate as dorset lamb breeders. You've had a breed that's been going for a lot of years. There's no doubt the improvement on weights and um, fat contents is vital. And um, we are handling um, mar a lot of different markets today and um, one of the things we do as a company is um, try and manage all of it. You know, we find a customer for whatever product we're buying. And um, sometimes we can't dictate what we've got to buy. You guys want to sell them, we've got to be able to buy them. But one of the things with the doors that you can um, get them off as an early age as suckers, which meets the domestic market and certain um, export markets where we're going, the high class markets. The large genetic pool has allowed stud masters to identify superior traits within the breed and rapidly respond to customers' demands. The Pole Dorset is renowned for rapid growth, producing large even lines of lambs that are ideal for both the domestic and export markets. From where I sit, if you go to any major, or minor for that matter, land market in the country. Go to Forbes, Dubbo, Wagga, Hamilton, Ballarat, Bendigo, wherever you like. It'd be more than 80% of cases. You walk along to each agent as they're lining up the lambs to sell. Every week they do it. In the first eight or 10 pens, what do you got? Most cases, eight out of 10 of those pens of lambs are by pole dorset. They're the biggest lambs. They're usually the longest lambs. They make the most money and they do it time and again. They've been doing it for years. And I mean, as I said, you've been challenged by some breeds to say that they're as good or better. I don't think there's anything better. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to piss in your pocket today. That's my belief. Because you can't deny the facts. They're everywhere you go, if you think of it. You can't deny the facts. You're the best. With superior fleshing and excellent red meat yield, combined with ease of lambing and the ability to overcome adverse seasonal conditions, it's no wonder that the Pole Dorset has such wide acclaim and respect in the marketplace. I'm Gary from Gary's Gourmet Meats. Uh, I'm in Young. My son and I uh, run a couple of farms as well as a butcher shop. We uh, grow our own fat lambs to provide for the shop. We like using Pole Dorsets, especially over our first cross use. Uh, they always produce a good solid lamb. Uh, we have no problems with lambing and also uh, the consistency with meat is being foremost for us. We get constant comments from our customers about how tender the meat is when it's uh, coming in from our lambs. With our first cross ewes, uh, these ones have constantly produced a uh, no problem, no hassles um, second cross lamb, which have been outstanding in growth and also in meat production plus tenderness. We can get consistent feedback from customers about how tender the meat is um, with that kind of a cross, a pole dorset merino or a first cross ewe over a pole dorset. You know, the clients of uh, ours here in Wagga, uh, I think the, uh, the fertility, the, the high uh, lambing rates, you know, fast growth, those sorts of things, the early turn off of, uh, of suckers in sucker season uh, leads to um, better profit lines for, for our clients and I see that uh, there's they're pretty major benefits in the pole dorset breed. Right through the lamb selling season I do I think that your pole dorset skins are the ones that uh, certainly in the sucker season um, yield the highest prices you know you see you see prices up upwards of 20 odd dollars in the in the sucker season when you're breeding um, you know suckers the, the best money is uh, for those early turn off lambs. 
and I see that that, uh, that your pole Dorset cross lambs are the ones to get. You know, as I said, that, that's where the, our vendors make the most money. Um, I think by you know, having those early turn off lambs, you know, when it, it goes right through, you get a nice even line of lambs. Um, you know, you, you get the good price per head, and that um, you know that runs back down and is made up obviously of your meat price and, your, and a good skin price. It's pretty hard to go past a traditional second cross lambs um, as much as they've tried everything else. It's, um, you always go back to your doors and crossbreds and you seem to get the best lambs. Yeah. New technologies have allowed breeders to ascertain the qualities of their breeding stock by examining hereditary traits, thereby improving carcass quality to give today's lamb producers a commercial edge. 80% of our uh, lamb, in, uh, lamb enterprise uh, we try and get off us, 80% of the uh, off us suckers. So the quicker we get them to market uh, um, from when they're born, we, we, we have two drops, March, April and June, July. The quicker we get them off in midwinter and, and before the summer, the better. So grace rates uh, are important and the pole dorts uh, come to the fore. When we have a split joining, we, we uh, join in summer and, and then, uh, then in spring uh, and we have no problem that, that, they, uh, that they do the job and we consistently get 125 to 130%. So I've got no complaints with when, when they work. I'm constantly looking ways to, to improve our lamb enterprise and, but I see no reason to change our breed. We've changed our feeding regime. Uh, we've grown a bit of vet this year to, to fill up the winter feed gap. But uh, the pole dorset uh, ram just does the job uh, and the improvements in the pole dorset within the breed uh, uh, far exceed anything I could get by swapping breeds. So I'm more than happy to stick with the pole dorsets.